It says, count it all joy. Count it all joy. When you fall into various trials. Wow. Because certain type of trials develop certain things. It's like working out, right? You ever get a trainer and they be having you do stuff and you're like, what is that working? <laughs> Other than my nerves. <laughs> but there's some like muscle underneath your rib cage somewhere that's like this big. <laughs> and it might be small and it might be a muscle that you never considered. It might be small. It might be a muscle that you, would, you don't even know the name of it. But it is holding everything together. And if that muscle was not developed, you wouldn't even be able to eat. So count it all joy when you fall into various trials. Sometimes you fall into a trial and you're like, that was a strange trial. But it's working a strange muscle that you may not need now, but you might need five years down the road. God does not waste a trial in your life. He doesn't waste one. Everyone has purpose. Everyone has purpose. Even those weird exercises. I'm serious. You've been in that gym. You've been with that trainer. You're like, what is that working? It hurts. And I don't understand. I just want glutes <laughs> and abs. And they'd be like, just trust me. Just trust me. You're like, I just want tries and buys. I Count it all joy when you fall into various trials. And sometimes those various trials happen in one season. In one season. You ever come out of one and you write back into another? And it was like almost like you only got through the one because he wanted to bring you into the next one. <laughs> God says count it all joy. There's another passage in Peter that says that it has similar language, but he uses the terms that things, they, these things happen if need be. So if I'm in it, that means that it's actually necessary for me and my stage of growth and development. I need it. It says knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. Here we go again. Something's being developed, right? But I love this because it produces patience. But look, it says, but let patience have its perfect work. Wow, I feel that thing right there. Don't want to get out the oven too soon. I just say for somebody, just stay there for a minute. Just for a minute. Don't deliver yourself. Don't, 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 don't deliver yourself. Let God deliver you. Because if you deliver yourself, you deliver yourself half done. Yeah. Half done. And guess what? If you're half done, what's going to happen? Come on, someone bring you out a half done steak. What's going to happen? Get, eat, get right back, put it right back in the oven. <laughs> now you got to go back in. And that's even worse. Stay there with faith. Stay there with joy. Stay there with hope. I promise you, he'll let you out right on time. Right on time. Not too long and not sooner than what's necessary. Stay there for a minute. Right? Okay. So, but let patience have his perfect work. Watch this. Because this is, this is what God's trying to get you to. That you may be perfect. Oh, wow. Perfect and complete, lacking. Ooh. 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 Jet lag. Ooh. Ooh. Let these words hit you. That you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. People be walking around here lacking. Lacking stuff that they need that can only be produced through the trial. 
that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. This is what God wants to raise up. He wants to raise up some people that have something, not lack stuff. You got something to give, not just something for yourself, but you got something to give to people that are around you. He wants to fill you up. You can touch somebody and stuff happens. Sometimes we look at people's lives and we have no idea what they've been through. They're blessing your socks off and you think that they were born this way. Come on. You, you think that they woke up. Come on, somebody. They didn't wake up like that. They went through to get that. And have to go through to keep it. Mm, all right. But, but let patience have its perfect work. Feel this. And notice all of this is connected to difficulty. All of this is connected to what we might call a negative moment. None of this that we're talking about here is produced in your prosperity. It's produced in your adversity. The you that you're trying to be, you know that, that Proverbs 31? And the fellas, what, what do the fellas want to be? They want to be like who? The King Solomon and who? The, Ephesians 5. Boaz. They want to be Boaz, all this kind of stuff. <laughs> like, who do guys want to be in the Bible? I'm just curious. Like, who? Like, name some people the guys want to be. Like, you want to be like Solomon, Jesus, who? Somebody said Jonah. You don't like Jonah. <laughs> a whale and belly and stuff like that. Like, seriously, like, who, who are the heroes? Like, who? Now, I know why you want to be like David. I don't know. <laughs> the brother like Solomon. He had a whole bunch of wives. Yeah. <laughs> Who else? Who? David? Joseph? Yeah, Joseph. Which Joseph? Oh, Job. Oh, second half Job. All right. So give me the blessing. I don't want to go through. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I don't want to go through. Just, just give me the, no, you can't. Ain't no such thing as a second half Job. You got to have the whole thing, baby. <laughs> because if he gives you the second half Job, then you have to go through 10 times as much to get to the next increase. There's no way around it. The point is, all of them had to go through stuff. To get solid like that. All of them. To get solid. But let patience have its perfect work. That you may be perfect and complete. And that's my prayer for you. I'm serious, man. I, I want to raise up a church full of people who are perfect and complete, lacking nothing. I'm serious. <laughs> Strong. Can stand. Can help. Not lacking anything. What that means is, if I'm going through something, that means that there was something I was lacking. Before I went through it. And I'm going to come out of it with something that I didn't have. That I could not have gotten unless I had gone through it. Let's keep going. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God. So remember I talked about, so I'm talking about navigating the negative. So, so seeing like, okay, God, I'm going through, God, I need to see what's happening here. I need wisdom for where I'm at. My dad died. I'm like, God, what does this mean? I know the natural stuff, but God, this has to mean something. I'm not a natural dude, right? Everything in the natural speaks something spiritual. So what is this? I'm literally, I'm praying like, God, you got to talk to me because I don't, I need something to look at. Because right now, I'm jacked up. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God. And it says, who, who gives to all, to all liberally and without reproach. In other words, he's not mad at you because you're asking questions. You're trying to understand. God enjoys when his sons and daughters are trying to understand, are trying to acquire knowledge, are trying to get understanding. You know, that, that old thing where don't question God. Who said that? Sometimes we embrace these, these things that are not even biblical. Don't question God. What do you mean don't question God? If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all liberally without re reproach, meaning that God is not, he's not upset that you're asking. He wants you to ask. He wants you to become wiser. He might hide it. He may not give you all the answers, but he likes the fact that you're exercising 
your your ability to think, your exercising, your your reason, your trying to become more. He's not mad at that. And he gives to all liberally without reproach. And the Bible says that it will be given him. There's not a situation that I go into that I'm asking God for something, for an understanding, that I disbelieve that he's going to give it to me. I have confidence going in that God, you know, I'm in, going into a counseling situation or going into, you know, like a business deal or business arrangement. I don't quite understand. I pray and I ask God and I know he's going to tell me what's up. There's some stuff that I have um, inquired to God about, even from a business perspective. And the Lord would come to me and it made sense on paper. And the Lord would come to me and say, don't do it. And in hindsight, there's been some business moves that if I'd have done it, I'd have been dead. I mean, I'd have just been so, so, you know, and so uh, God has wisdom. And if you ask me, he'll give it to you. Let's keep going. But let him ask in faith with no doubting. For he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. Look at this, this word play. Look at this analogy here. So he's talking about the person who, do who doubts. So if you're a doubter, this is you. You're like a wave of the sea, unstable. 